Uh, basically, a complete protein is a protein source that contains all of the essential amino acids. Mm -hmm. Amino acids are present in the food and they're the building blocks for your body. You don't need to get them all in one meal, you don't need to get them all necessarily in one day. If you're eating a varied diet, again, lots of greens and lots of uh, nuts and seeds, different nuts and seeds, they all have different profiles. If you're eating these the superfoods like the chia and you know flax and if you're eating um, grains, whole grains like quinoa or millet, those are the really amazing high performance grains. Beans, especially sprouted, it's easier to digest them. If you're eating all these foods spread out, you know, throughout the course of your week and your month or whatever, again, you don't need to get a complete protein at a time. So as long as you're eating a variety of those protein sources, overall you'll be getting all of the amino acids from them that you need in order to meet your complete requirements. But it doesn't have to happen all in one meal. Like you don't have to have complete protein at breakfast or complete protein at dinner. You'll be getting some throughout all your meals and snacks throughout the day. And if you are doing um, a lot of exercise and you do think you need some more protein or if you're trying to build muscle, in that case incorporating a plant-based protein powder is an option too. The very best in my opinion is this product called Sun Warrior. It's a raw plant-based protein. So one scoop a day, full chain of uh, amino acids. So it's a complete protein. So if you are worried about it, adding, you know, on the days, for example, that you work out, um, adding one scoop of that is going to cover your basis in terms of that. And if you are trying to build mass, you will need a little bit more protein. And so that's one, one way you can do that. In terms of that, if it's more a texture thing, sometimes using the soy can be helpful in that case. Again, I would say only do that for one or two of your meals per week. Mushrooms are actually a really good meaty, I actually don't even eat mushrooms myself because I find they really do remind me of the, really? the tech, and it, it doesn't work for me, but if you're looking for that, the mushrooms can be a good source, especially some of these exotic mushrooms. Um, there's certain ways you can cook mushrooms, like a mushroom steak or mushroom burger. Mushroom at, like, yeah, the burger and yeah. it's so delicious. It's yeah. amazing. I love it. And you can also make different types of like bean and grain burgers. So this is just finding recipes online. So you could do like black bean burgers or um, you know quinoa burgers. Um, I also like using eggplant oh. for my my dishes. I actually make an eggplant lasagna, which I. have Fun. Yeah, very hearty, very meaty. Yeah, if that's what you're looking for. So there are definitely options, and don't think that you're restricting yourself when, when once you become a vegetarian or a vegan. There are so many more things to try. Like when I became a vegan, I start, I didn't eat kale before, and I tried kale for the first time. I didn't eat quinoa before. I tried quinoa for the first time, mm. and I was adding more things. It seemed like it opens adding, up a whole yeah, world. Of, I was yeah. adding more things into my diet that I was you know, eliminate. And, and big in the raw, the raw world is uh, using nuts and seeds to create that texture of being. So you can look up also like a, uh, an almond pate, for example, or the, the seed cheeses or these kinds of things. So if you know, pick up a raw cookbook and you'll find all kinds of ways that they're, they're creating foods that are more concentrated out of plant-based things.